Okay. I'm back. I am. I am at home. Trying to get into the chat room. This was very nice. Well, a book about her. That's a good one. <laughs> okay, stop. So they had, um, okay, I'm looking over here, okay, so I got like a little, um, little little thing you know I want to say about the service okay and I just went on Facebook and somebody had put up what did they say wait hold on let me go back I want to say it right they they put up Spend time praying for people instead of talking about them. Okay, I just want to give a little comment on that before I go into what my video, what this video is all about. That's true, we're supposed to pray about those, you know what I'm saying? You know, instead of talking about them, um, etc, etc, we need to pray for them, right? That's true. Okay. But I just keep remembering what the Bible says. Let me bring it up. Let me get the scripture because I like to, um, um, I like to bring the scriptures into my conversation. But I also like to make sure that I am saying the right thing, you know? So, let me just find the scripture and then... I hate that when you go to look for something. Okay, let's go to three. Zero. Six. Okay, here we go. Okay. 
Alright. Let's go with him. Okay, five and three. Okay, here we go. Let's go back to that free thing first. And then we can go into that. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you what the Bible says to pray. The Beatitudes tells us what to do. Let's read it for a second. And that is Matthew 5. Starting at the first verse. And this is the KJV I'm reading. And seeing the multitudes, it's called the Sermon on the Mount. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that moan, for they shall be comforted. Okay, wait a minute. Alright, blessed are they that moan, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all men of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is therefore there. It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the Lord or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the Lord to all be fulfilled. For I say unto you, going to the 20th verse, I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. He 
Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, thou, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the, of, shall be in danger of the judgment. The footnotes on that is, Killing is a terrible sin, but anger is a great sin too, because it also violates God's command to love. Anger in this case refers to seething, brawling bitterness against someone. It is a dangerous emotion that always threatens to leap out of control, leading to violence, emotional hurt, increased mental stress, and spiritual damage. Anger keeps us from developing a spirit pleasing to God. Have you ever been proud that you didn't strike out and say what was really on your mind? Self-control is good. But Christ wants us to practice thought control as well. Jesus said that we will be held accountable even for our attitudes. All right. They say, but I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of, of the council. But whosoever shall say thy thou fool shall be danger shall be in danger of hell fire. Here you go. Now we get to the point. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thou brother hath aught against thee. See, I always say we think your brother. So I got I gotta stop saying it. Because it don't say nothing about faint. And there rememberest. See, it didn't say think. So that means that remembrance means that something transpired between you and this person. And you remember that something transpired. You remember that you did something or they did something. Right? And it affected your spirit or it affected their spirit. So if you remember that thy brother had ought against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar. See, I kept saying that you think your brother had fought against me. But it's not. If you remember that, the brother, Lord, help me to remember that correctly. Leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift. Here's another thing that I be trying to do. Agree with thy adversary quickly while as thou art in the way with him. As soon as they angry with you, clear it up right then and there. Agree with them. Whether you're right, whether they right, whether you wrong, whether they wrong. Agree. Right? Lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge. And the judge deliver thee to the officer. And thou be cast into the prison. Into prison. Verily I, verily I say unto thee, thou shalt by no means come out thence. Till thou have paid the uttermost furthering. So I guess that's saying to somebody there. Okay. You have heard that it was said, but I should not commit. Okay, so never mind. Let's go back to that. Broken relationships can hinder our relationship with God. If we have a problem or grievance with a friend, we should resolve the problem as soon as possible. We are hypocrites if we claim to love God while we hate others. See what I'm saying? And they say this all the time. I hear it so much, so much. That it's like an imprint in my brain. But it kind of like, be like, okay. If you're saying, you know, that you love God. And you're saying that you're praying and you're fasting. But what I don't understand is how you treat me wrong. Now, we'll go a little bit because people, are, they always saying this. You see what I'm saying? Because I catch vibes that people feel some kind of way because I don't affiliate with them. Right? Because I don't say too much to them. Because I don't participate in certain things. The preacher said tonight, you ain't got to be in everything. So excuse me. For not being one to participate in certain things. 
Excuse me if I want to stay home and don't want to go out to an outreach. Excuse me if I want to stay home and don't want to go to no banquet. Excuse me if I want to stay home and don't want to go over to this church when my church is closed, when I feel like I need to be in my church. When I feel like I need to, 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 to get spiritually inclined from my bishop and my pastor, but my bishop and my pastor and my elders and everybody else in the church is going to another church. When we got our own church, our own service night, and it's shut down to go over there. So now, it says here, We are hypocrites hypocrites, if we claim to love God while we hate others. Now, let's go look up the word hate, because hate is real heavy. Right? Hate. Okay, it's a it's a verb. First one is a ver- verb. And it says feel intense or passionate dislike for someone. This is the intense hate. Ooh. You know how back in the day people used to say, Oh, I hate them with a passion. That means that your whole being, your thought pattern. Every time you see that person, you hate them. You know, you 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 dislike for another. And and the synonyms is loathe, detest, dislike greatly, abhor, abhor. That's in the that's in the Bible. What does it say? Um um something, something to is something and abhor that which is good abominate despise right then it say the noun is the intense or passionate the intense or passionate dislike feelings of hate and revenge feelings so now we not supposed to okay. okay here you go here's another one this is the informal and this is the hate on okay so the verb is hate a third person present hated a past tense hated past partic- participle particle Hating present particle. Participle. And then it says, then we go on down, and then you got an informal hate. That's the hate on somebody. So that means express strong dislike for, criticize, or abuse. And that's the kind of hate, hate that's go, that goes on in church. I don't think nobody has a real compassionate hate hatred towards somebody i don't think a saint can really say i hate that person because that's a sin right so this is the type of hate that's going on in the church the informal hate on to hate on somebody to 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 express a strong dislike for to criticize or abuse. I can't hate on them for trying something new, see? So, I guess I hate on people based on their action of them hating me. And it, it's kind of like, bad to say even bad to feel that somebody really just hates you for what you do and just like initiate things you know as you have people that that is uh, initiated initiate trouble just always start in trouble always you know 
got something to say about something because you just don't like what the person is doing. So, okay, so now let's go back to that. It says, we are hypocrites if we claim to love God while we hate others. Our attitude towards others reflects our relationship with God. So that's something to think about. Because I'm going to say this, right? I do not affiliate too much with my church family, right? And people may say that, oh, even Jordan is still holding on to things that happened way back when. Even Jordan is still don't want to be bothered, don't want to affiliate with us, don't want to eat with us, don't want to participate in some of our services, because, because, I would love to know what they because is, but I'm just going to like, go by what I think they would say, because of what happened with her grandmother, or because of what happened with Mother Giles, or because of what happened with her father, but see, that's how much they are connected to God because they would see that my non-affiliation with them ain't got nothing to do with what you did. It got it got to do with what you're doing and what you're not doing. Because I feel and I know for a fact that once people start focusing on God more then they won't, they, they won't even begin to have time to notice me not eating with them. Because it wouldn't bother them. You see what I'm saying? They wouldn't so much be focusing on fellowshipping so much if they was fellowshipping. They wouldn't be able to point out what I'm not doing if they were doing it. Now, let me, let me explain myself. Now... If they, if, if they were the type of person to fellowship with me, right, they wouldn't notice that I'm not fellowshipping with them because of the simple fact I would be. They would not have the time to say that Evan Jordan is not doing what she's supposed to do. Even Jordan is not loving right. Even Jordan is not. She don't want to sit down and eat with us. You know what? I ain't gonna even worry about it. I'm just gonna offer her food. You know what I'm saying? I'm just gonna offer it and I'm gonna leave it alone. Whoever ain't got no food, you're welcome. Soon as service over there in Jordan, we, we got food downstairs. If you wanna eat, you can come on downstairs and eat. No problem. Just come on down. Right? The Holy Ghost in me is gonna let me know that you are genuinely inviting me to eat. And I'm going to go down there and I'm eating with you. I'm not going down to eat with you because I feel like I'm obligated to do it. I'm not going down there to eat with you because um, you said so. I'm not going down to eat with you because I should. I'm going down to eat with you because you made me feel like you really wanted me to come down and eat with you. And see... The Holy Ghost in me, the love in me that I have for you is going to let me see that and feel that. And I'm going to come down and, and I'm going to fellowship with you. And, 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 and in my appreciation of you inviting me, I may even come over to your table and sit down and chat with you. Because I want to show you that I really do appreciate you inviting me to eat with you. Because see... I can only talk about myself. I'm a very appreciative person. Because 
I have been without lights. I have been without food. I have been without clothing. I have been sick in my bed with no one there. I have been walking the street. I have been homeless. And when I say homeless, I don't mean in a shelter. I mean homeless. Where I was walking the street sleeping on a bench. I have been drunk. Or should I say intoxicated, not drunk. I have been depressed. I have tried to kill myself, right? So, there are things in my life that I have experienced where I become very appreciative with the little things. I have not always had. See, people don't understand why I go, why I like Louis Vuitton. People don't understand why I like Chanel. People don't understand why I like to get my hair done and spend crazy money to get it done. People don't understand why I like nice clothes. People don't understand why I like to look nice. You see what I'm saying? Because the saints make me feel like I'm the ugliest person in the church. And trust me, there's some... You know what? I'm put like this. I would never say that people really are ugly. I would never say. Because I always accept people from the inside. You see what I'm saying? So, if they are not if they are not great looking in the face, I look beyond that. I look at what's inside of them. Because for some crazy reason, I could see right in people. And I can see the good in them. Even though people may see this of them, I see this in them. Because that's what I'm looking for. Now they may, until they actually show me that that's not, that what I see is not really there, then I, I'm not going to say that they don't have it. You see what I'm saying? Now it's different from a person that can sing and can't sing. Some people just can't sing. And I don't care how much I may want them to sing or wish upon them singing or somebody else may feel like they dotty people. If they can't sing, I ain't going to tell them they can sing. Because, see, I know what it's supposed to sound like. I know the melody, the harmony. I know the music part. You see what I'm saying? of a song that somebody else may not know. And so when you go to sing, I can tell automatically whether you're singing or not. I can tell them. And you may go and you may sing a song and it may be off this time, but I'm still going to say you can sing because I can hear it in you. So, until people show me who they are I accept them for who they are and then once they show me who they are then I adapt to them you see but the thing is is that you know we'll go back to save people and what they say about hypocrites our attitude toward others reflect our relationship with God so if I if I if I pray, right, I'm praying, and the, and the Lord is working with me through the prayer, and I feel the power of God upon me, right, and I get up, and I praise the Lord, and I go about my business, right, um, it does not change the fact that I'm saved. Because I went downstairs and I went on out the door and I didn't speak. See, I'm not really enthused with speaking. You speaking to me does not prove to me that you're saved. You speaking to me every single time I see you does not prove that you love me. You're, you could just be doing it out of, out of routine. It's like some people come to church because 
because it's a routine, but not because they want to come. When you start coming to church because you want to come, then you'll start seeing a difference in the praise. See, I have no issue with praising God because I'm praising him because he did a lot for me. You see what I'm saying? I don't have time to be praising him to show off. I don't have time to be making a scene and performing for people to make people think that I'm loving God. I'm praising God. No, I can sit down and be very silent and do, don't budge, don't move, don't even say amen. But my relationship with God is on point and he knows my life and he knows what I'm doing because see I'm no longer here to please the people I'm here to please God you see what I'm saying I'm here to allow God to use me and make me the person that he wants me to be and use me for his glory nobody else don't never have to use me they never have to use me to lead a song or to lead the service they never have to use me to preach they never have to use me to um to be a part of their program because see this is what i this is the decision that i have came to that whether they use me or not god is going to always use me when he see fits and when the time is right and when you see me sitting down silent and not saying nothing god is not not using me and see my thing is not to sit there and perform if you singing a song and it ain't it ain't budging in my spirit, you know what I'm saying? Because I see that you up there and you trying to perform. You up there trying to get. You know everybody like you. You don't pay seven seventy dollars in 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 tides. So everybody is like, oh, that person got money. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. But here go little old me. That only put in twenty dollars, or put in ten dollars, or maybe even five. Oh, uh, we gotta hear what she gotta say. So, your attitudes toward others reflects your relationship with God. So I'm thinking about that too, because I don't really affiliate with people. So that's why people are always saying, what kind of relationship you can have with God if you walk by people and you don't say nothing to them? And then they turn around and say, people get bent out of shape when you don't say nothing. Make up your mind. Do you want me to speak to you or do you don't want me to speak to you? So, um, let's go back to today. So, we had the service in Orlando. She had on pink and silver. Right? She had a pink dress on. No, she had a pink suit on. And she had silver shoes. Right? Like, like not shiny silver. Matte silver. And everybody else had, Pastor Silver had on pink like her. And Missionary Small had on pink like her. Now, her daughter-in-law was way off. Her daughter-in-law didn't even have brown. I mean, didn't even. Her daughter-in-law had on blue. I think she had on blue. But everybody else had on silver or gray. Me and Michelle had on the same thing. We had on all white with brown, with brown, with a brown. I'll post a picture on my Facebook page. With um, brown like dusted right that's what they are dusted I think and um I instead of me wearing my brown shoes my new shoes I wore my black boots just cause I was told it's gonna be crazy go but anyway but my thing is is that is that nobody didn't even say nothing to us to me nor Michelle her mother had on pink, so her mother ain't tell her nothing. The choir members had on silver. The the director had on white, only because she was ushering. 
but everybody else in the choir had on gray or whatever, whatever other color they wanted to wear. But only one person did not have on the colors that correspond with Mother Anderson, and that was his son. That was her son. Her son and her husband. Everybody else in the church that was of any connection to House of Prayer had on the colors, except for me and the shop. And you know what I was pondering in my head when I saw everybody came in and stuff like that? Right? I was pondering for a little bit. And then I said, oh. I said, wow. They really. They really. And I'm, I'm going to finish that. They really disliked it us. They really disliked it us. Really, really did. You know, I, I just kept looking. And I was leaving the service, so I had to close my eyes. I had to keep my eyes closed so it wouldn't take over me. But it did get in my spirit. It did affect me. You see what I'm saying? Because I was like, wow. Really? Is that serious? And there was some person that was really dogging out Mother Anderson. You saw her today, you would never think that she said anything. You know? But that was the eye opener to let me see that um, there's some place else I need to go with that person. You know? And, and, and you just don't understand. You know, you just get tired of it. You know, why can't... There's a, there's, a, there's a saying in the world. I don't know what they're still saying. But back in... My, well, I can't say my time, but I say my time. They used to say, "Why can't it? Why can't we all just get along?" Everybody is always trying to be better than the next, and there's always some click going on. That's why I said it in some message I preached one time. So I don't have no click. Mm mm. You may think I'm nobody, but God think I'm somebody. That song is so true. I'm just a nobody. Trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save everybody. That's it. Because everybody feels, I see that the, the church folks feels like you have to be, they don't really, let me finish that sentence, that you have to be together in order to be saved. They don't understand that passage in the Bible where it says on the day of Pentecost they was all in on one accord with one mind. And if I'm correct, it says in one place. They don't really understand that. They think it means one place, which is the church. They think it's one mind. That means if, if, if they think, if somebody thinks this, If somebody thinks this, then everybody's supposed to think it. And if one, if one person don't think what that other person thinks, then that one person that don't think what everybody else is thinking is no longer saved. So now everybody's going to shun that one person because that one person ain't thinking what they think. So that means that they can't be saved because the Bible say we all going to have one mind. We all think the same. Do they not understand that that means spiritual? That's not a natural thing. You see what I'm saying? They even say we're going to all look the same. That's not clothing wise. You see what I'm saying? That That is the glow of God on every saved person. Everybody going to look the same. Look like they belong to God. Yeah, if you just happen to have on the same clothes, then they can say you look alike as far as the clothes is concerned. But that's not what the word is actually saying. Because, see, they need to go back and read that because the scripture does not say that they was in the upper room and they all had on the long black and white, black 
skirt and a white blouse and a hat on their head. And they didn't have no jewelry on. They didn't have no nail polish on. They didn't have no nails. They they didn't have no wig. They didn't have no no um, sandals. They it didn't it didn't say all of that. So I really don't understand why they add that in there. It said they was up in the upper room all in one place. And I'm assuming the place was the upper room. One mind, holy, one accord, thinking the same thing. All they was thinking about was that comforter. They didn't know what to expect. They knew that Jesus told them to go up in the upper room and wait for the promise. And that's what they did. They went up there waiting. They had no idea what the promise was. What is the promise? These days, go, no, let me say, they didn't know it was the Holy Ghost. But they didn't know how it was coming. Ghosts, you probably would think it's going to come walking through. It's going to be a ghost. But they was up there. They was waiting together. They all had the same mind. They all felt the same way. They all thought the same thing. This person wasn't over here thinking, oh, why is she up there singing the song? I was leaving the service today. Now, listening to the service on tape, it sounded real powerful and real good. But actually seeing it, I was like, Lord, what is happening here? Why? What is going on? We going back to that stage again. There was one moment I was leading the service. People was like paying me no mind sitting there. Whatever. Then there was a moment when I was leading the service and everybody was up on their feet. Everybody was praising God. Everybody was into God. Oh, even Jordan is so saved now. I don't, I don't, I, I, and to be honest, I have the faintest idea what happened. They started acting crazy towards me, especially now that I got my teeth. Now, when I didn't have no teeth, everybody was like, we want you to do this. The way you want to do this. And would you like to do this? Don't you see a mask on my face? Why are you asking me to do all this stuff? What am I supposed to be doing? I'm not getting up there showing my gums. I don't care if Odom, Podom, Dodom did it. I don't care if Lord's Calls, Paul did it. Sharon is not doing it. Sharon is going to keep her little mouth closed. She's not going to say nothing. And when the time is right for me to say something and I get my little teeth, then that's when I open up my mouth and that's when I say something. To the point where somebody got angry with me. So, everybody had the little silver on. The boys, the men had the little gray on. The women had the silver on. It's like I said, the pastor had on pink like Mother Anderson had pink and silver. Ella Robinson had on the silver suit. And they all was walking like, yeah. Yep. You ain't got to, um, we, we, we ain't tell you nothing. Now look, you ain't even a part of us. And that's probably why they had me up there leading service. See, we, we, you ain't nothing to us. It's okay. I had on my white, so I felt very dressed up. Michelle said the Lord told her. Well, here's the thing. This is how it really happened. She said that the, well, we could wear the same thing. She said, well, see, it's good that I, I told you. See, the Lord told me to tell us to wear the same thing. But when I think, I'm thinking about it now, the, mm -mm, I'm the one who came up with that. Let me make sure I'm thinking about it. Because he was in the store. I'm not going to say that the Lord wasn't in it, right? But we was in the store. And she went in there to get what she was going to get for her job. And I went in there and I was looking for a brown. The 
same kind of brown that I had on there. I was looking for something brown. As I said, I don't have nothing brown. I want to put that in my wardrobe. So I went looking. Excuse me. I tried on one jacket. It was kind of small, whatever. But I was like, nah. So I left it alone. So I went walking through. And then I saw a white skirt. I said, oh, this is nice. Maybe she did. I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say she did. I said, this is a nice skirt. And she, I think she did say, so let's wear that. You want to wear that? We can wear that together. And she had had something else. And I said, okay, we can wear this. And I saw the black. She said, all right, Mrs. Jordan, what you want to wear? You want to wear the white or the black? Okay. I said, no. I said, let's get the white. I said, because then that way we'll have a white skirt for communion. Because I ain't had no white skirt. And I thank God for that because. I did, Lord, I thank you. I didn't thank you. I thank you. Because I didn't need a white skirt. And that's brown. I really don't wear it anymore. But um, I'll see what the Lord said when I wake up. And he want me to wear that again. Because I was showing up for that skirt right back on. <laughs> okay, so she was like, all right, so we can get that. And what you want to wear with it? I said, well, we can either wear a beige top. But then I say, you know what, I'll wear my white, my white blouse with the bow to it. So, she had a, um, the, the beige duster, I'm going to call it duster, she had that. And I was like, okay, so we could wear this, we could wear the duster, the beige, and we could wear our gold, our gold shoes, and we set. Well, we're not gold, they nude. So, yeah, it was that. So, the Lord, I guess, knew. Mm, let me take that guess off. The Lord knew that they had decided everybody was wearing what they was wearing. And so, we came off with wearing the same thing. And it probably wasn't noticed too much. Nobody didn't say nothing. It probably wasn't noticed too much because it was real casual. You know, it wasn't really dressy. But it was casual. But we, we had on the same thing. We had on the same skirts. We just didn't have the same tops on, but we had the same skirts on. And, and, and the same duster. But it was okay. You know? But I saw everybody come in with the color on. And I was like, oh, okay. Alright, this is planned. This is planned. And, you know, the only reason why it kind of, like, bothers me and hurts because this just goes to show how people make you feel like you, you're not a part of them. See, and, and, and we don't do that. I don't do that. I put it, when we was wearing the colors for the concert and, and the youth explosion, I went to all the youth people, went to all the men, everybody that was a part, and let them know what we were wearing. Because I don't want nobody to feel no kind of way. When I was up there singing, 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 the spirit came to me and said, invite, invite Cheryl to sing with you. And it came to me, I said, oh, wow. I said, yeah. So I had noticed that she got up and she had went to the back. Right? And then I had texted her and I told her about it. And I said, if you would like to sing with us, you... You, you, you can if you want something like that. I said, and she said, okay. And um, I brought her in. I told her the colors we was wearing. Brought her in because she had. She was the one that separated herself. She was the one that didn't want to be a part. Now this was the worship team. I didn't put her on the worship team. You see what I'm saying? Um, I put her on to sing as as the choir. Because she don't like to participate with nothing. That's what she said. I never told her not to be a part of nothing. She was the one that let me know. Oh, I thought I was supposed to just sing. I didn't know I had to get songs. I didn't know I was going to be doing all of this. I don't want to do that. And every time we have the concert, she always tell me she's not being a part. So... But I always say it's okay. It's okay. And when it, there's something about that, that little segment of words that 
that helps me yeah I feel good you know kind of like lift the burden and just like I said I was praying in here and the Lord kind of lift the burden for me and then in the church I did another prayer and I just was thanking him thank you cause he's about to do something let me look in the camera he is about to do something all this hurt and stress it ain't too much stress I'm not really stressed out but all this hurt to the core hurt, all this, you know, even the things that's going on with Tracy, the Lord is about to fix this thing, about to fix it, I have no idea how he's going to fix it, I don't know which way he's going to fix it, but he's going to fix it. It's not really getting overwhelming, but it did get overwhelming at a point. And I just had to let out. I had to let out and I had to cry to God about it. And you know what I've noticed? That when I pray, right? That I find myself out of myself in the spirit praying. Right? So that is a fact. I've heard people say that and it is true you have to pray in the spirit. So I found myself praying in the spirit to a point where my spirit is weeping. Where I'm crying but it's like inside me. Like I'm crying but I'm not crying because I'm hurting or crying because something is logically going on. I'm crying because I'm spiritually hurting. And God is like, well, it says that the spirit will intercede, groaning and moaning because you don't know what to pray for, but the spirit knows what to pray for. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And that's how my prayer has been for the past couple of months. I get to praying, I get to praying. Sometimes the Lord, that time that I went into prayer, the Lord led me into prayer. A lot of times, you know, you, you know, I just use the word, you don't be thinking about praying. You know, you may be sitting here doing something, you know, just going about your daily errands or whatever, your daily things that you do. And the Lord will just put it in your spirit. Go pray. Get up and pray. And sometimes he will tell me that and I will wind up doing something else and forget. And it will come back to me, get up and pray. Sometimes I'll be in my bed. Maybe watching television. And the Lord will say, pray. And I'll be like, all right. Let me get down and pray. And when I get down and pray, that's what happens. He takes me somewhere. And I get to praying. And I get to groaning. And I get to crying. And I get to, you know, going into the spirit. Speaking in tongues and stuff. And I don't know what's going on. You know? Sometimes the prayer be to my core. Like to my heart. Like. Like something that that that's there and I just need to let it out. And when I let it out, it just comes out and I just be like going in and crying and 
groaning and groaning. And then sometimes I'll pray and I'll be laughing sometimes in the spirit. I'm, I'm in the spirit, but I'll be laughing sometimes. I'm praying and, you know, I, I'm speaking and I'm, I'll be hearing myself. I'll be like, yo, this is really awesome. This is really, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what I'm saying, but Lord, you know. I just seem like I just be having, it's like I'm having a conversation with him and he answering me back through me. And I go back with him and speak with him. I'll take, I heard my grandma used to say, I'll take nothing for my journey. I miss that lady. That lady been dead a lot of years, but I'm telling you, the things that I'm going through now, she went through them. I, I remember seeing her go through them. And I'm able to go through them. Let me see what's after this. Let me go. Let me just click on it. Let me see what it is. It says, there is therefore now. This is Romans 8. And the title is No Condemnation in Christ. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin, sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. See, that's the thing. That's where I am. That's that, that is exactly where I am right now. You say, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. You, you worry about what's going on in the flesh. You worry about what this person is. You worry about what this person is. You worry about what this person is. worry about where this person is going. Where they not going. They coming to church. They not coming to church. They saying they not saying. Mm-mm. When you, when your mind is on Christ and you set your affection on things above and not on things on the earth, they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. So your mind is going to be on spiritual things at all times. All times. You could be cooking your food, figuring out how can I cook this spiritually. Lord, sanctify this food while I'm cooking it. Not only while I'm eating it, sanctify it while I'm cooking it. So when they when they go to eat it, and they put the muscle in their mouth, you mess with their head. You start working on them. Start slapping them up that side of their head. Start beating at their heart. Through the food. You see what I'm saying? For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. See what I'm saying? Death. Call in mind. Everything that you think about is negative. And it's going to lead you to a deadly life. And what I mean deadly, I mean the spiritual part of you. Remember, we are spiritual beings. So when, when, you, when you are not minding the things, Okay, when you're not minding the things of the spirit so that you can live, then that means you're minding the things of the flesh that keeps you dead, that you don't have no life. Yeah, you're living, you're breathing, but you ain't got no life. You see what I'm saying? Once we come to the understanding that our lives are spiritual, no longer carnal. That's why I say, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? No, God forbid. How then that are we, how then then, how then we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? See what I'm saying? 
So when our minds become spiritual, we become dead to the flesh. Yeah, we're in the flesh. That's why I say we're in this world, but not of this world. We're walking after the spirit, not after the flesh. So when we get when we get to that point that we are spiritual and every part of us is spiritual and I ain't even talking about oh we don't pick up a cigarette or we don't drink or we don't go to the bar or we don't dance no 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 I'm not talking about that that's 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 the tangible thing or the non-tangible however you say but when we get to a point where everything that we think about is spiritual then and only then will we be able to say that we are not after the flesh we're after the spirit we do not mind the things of the flesh we mind the things of the spirit everything will be Lord what you want me to Lord what you want me to <laughs> Lord what you want me to wear Lord how you want me to act Lord I, I need you to help me because you know what I'm feeling right now and you know how I want to act but I don't want to act the way I want to act I don't want to think the way I want to think I don't want to respond the way that I feel to respond I want to do it the way that you would do it because once I finish responding once I finish acting once I finish doing I want you to be seen so when we get to that point that when every time we open up my, our mouths what comes out our mouths is what God would say you think that slogan is just something what would Jesus do think about it before you say it, before you do it, before you, that's why I be quiet. That's why I don't say nothing. Because I don't want to regret nothing that I have said. So when I get ready to say something, the Holy Ghost say, shut up. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Because then I probably will regret it. And the lady said that tonight. She said, I don't I only want to know how she said it I only want to know what well, I'm paraphrasing what I need to know and what I don't need to know don't tell me I don't want to know because then once I know what I become accountable so if you want to be out there sinning don't bring your sin around me so that way I won't be accountable for telling or not telling you. So therefore, I stay away from people. Because see, if I see you acting up and I see you sinning and I see you doing wrong, I'm going to have to say something because I become accountable for what I see and I got to cry against sin. So therefore, if I don't see it, you don't come all underneath me, you don't start running your mouth to me, then I ain't got to say nothing. So... I'm saying this on the video. I'm going to stop talking to people. I'm going to stop having conversations with people because people don't want to hear what I got to say because I'm going to say the truth. Because once I hear what you say to me, whether it's on the telephone or on the person, I become accountable. And if you're saying something or doing something wrong, my job as an evangelist is to let you know where you're wrong at. And you know what my prayer is? always pray on the same kind of love. So you may have to bring your little ears a little closer to the video. I pray and ask God to, I want to be a John the Baptist. John the Baptist, he said he was the one crying in the wilderness, preparing the way of the Lord, making his path straight. He was preparing the way for Christ. That's what I want to be. I want to be the John the Baptist. That when I see sin, I want to cry against it. And I don't want to be ashamed to cry against it. He went 
who was it, Hadius? Was up there messing around with, I think it was his brother's wife or something? Probably right in front of his brother? John the Baptist said, no, you're wrong. You're wrong. You ain't got nobody doing that. And what happened? The woman got mad, sent her daughter over there, because the king, the king was, was the, the one that John the Baptist was telling was wrong. So the woman that sent the daughter, because John the Baptist, John the Baptist, right? John the Baptist, no, not John the Baptist. The, the, the woman's daughter, let me, let me get it right. And y'all can write and tell me if I'm wrong, I don't mind, because I don't mind learning the word. If I'm wrong, tell me. But if I'm correct, John the Baptist was going against, I believe the person's name is Pontius, a Pontius. And he was, Pontius was messing around, I believe, with his brother's wife, right? Committing adultery. John the Baptist was telling him that you're wrong. You ain't got no business lying with your brother's wife. God don't like it. He didn't like him, so he put him in prison, right? He put him in prison. I don't want you interfering. I'm about to party. I don't want you messing up my nice little moment here because I'm going to have this girl here and I don't want you coming up in here preaching no gospel so I'm going to put you in prison so he put him in prison right? and and Jesus heard that John the Baptist was in prison and he went the other way it's in the Bible it does say he went around the block up the corner and to another state took the plane and because John the Baptist's time wasn't up yet. It was coming to the end, but it wasn't up yet. So he threw John the Baptist in prison. So now, the the wife of the brother that was messing with Pontius had a daughter. And Pontius liked the daughter. Liked it how the daughter danced. See how, see how, um, what's the word? You know how to do I'm going to use the word sinful. But that's not the word I was looking for. But see how sinful sin is? The the the, the man, Potter's brother wife got a daughter, and Potter's like the daughter, the way the daughter dance. So he getting Google eyes at the daughter. Perverted. That's the word I'm going to say. I perverted the world was back then. Same thing happening now, incest, right? So he liked the daughter in the way he danced. And he called the daughter to her, to him, and told the daughter, you can have anything you want. Just dance for me. I just love how you dance. So she went back and told the, the mother. And the mother is the man, is the, is the brother's wife that John the Baptist is preaching against. Right? I don't know where that brother is. That's a story I would like to read and find out, which I will. So, she, <clears throat> she went to the mother and told the mother that the man said that he liked not what I'm buying and that whatever, he, whatever she wanted, she asked for and he'd give it to her. And he said it in front of all his friends, right? Because, you know, people was hostage, did he? They, they proud people. So when she told the mother, the mother told her to go back and tell him you want the head of John the Baptist. What the crazy do people want with heads? What do they want with their heads? I guess they made him make him a martyr, right? A mortar, whatever you call it. So when she went back to Pontius, Pontius was the king. When she went back to Pontius, so Pontius, if I'm correct, it says in the Bible, that his heart was grieved. And he was saying like, oh my goodness. I can't go against this because I'm the king. And everybody heard me say this to this woman. He said, all right, you dance for me, I'll give you the head of John the Baptist. That girl danced like, I'm sure she put on the best performance ever. My mother told, probably told her, you better dance like, like you're crazy. And she went and did her dance. And when she finished dancing, 
they went to the prison wards and the prison holes or wherever the prison was and cut off poor John the Baptist's head. And John the Baptist had sent for Jesus and wanted to know whether Jesus was the one. In other words, I done been preparing the way for you. Is you the one that I was preparing the way for? Will I, will I get to see you again? Because he had done baptized him already. Before he went to prison, he had done baptized him. So, he never got to see Jesus again because they cut his poor little head off and took it and gave it to Pilate's wife, a girlfriend or whatever. And like, oh my goodness. I think that was his wife. I think he had married him and John the Baptist was telling him that he was in adultery because he was lying in the bed with his brother's wife. So, it said to be carnally mind is death and to be spiritually mind is life and peace. Because the carnal mind, the carnal mind is enmity, enmity against God. For if it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. You can't, you can't do what's right. Because you're enmity. You keep that carnal mind, you're going to always, you're going to always be going against God, going against God's people. Because you got a carnal mind. As soon as you get the spiritual mind, you ain't going to have no problems with nobody. I can always tell when the Lord is working on somebody. I can always tell, always know. You know what I'm saying? And people that say, oh, Evangelist Jordan is the hardest person to work with. I don't have problems with nobody else, though. I go, I work on a job. I had job. People ain't never had problems with me. I never was called in the office because I'm starting trouble on the job. Nobody never went to the boss talking about me because I always was minding my business. It was time for lunch. I went and had my lunch and was back 10 minutes early. As soon as I started hanging out with somebody, here I am being late. Oh, you ain't got to hurry back. Oh, we stay out 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, but we supposed to be back at 1 o'clock. Not 105. Not even 102. Oh, it's all right. And I'm listening. So I don't understand why there's so much trouble in the church right now. All I do is go to church, sit in my little spot. They may, people may see me reading service. People may see me reading the scripture. People may even see me preaching. That's it. I don't affiliate with people. They don't see me everywhere. I don't go everywhere. That's why I don't understand why people have so much problems with me when I don't even have problems with you. I don't say nothing to you. I don't say nothing about you. And I'm the type of person, whatever I say behind your back, I can say it in your face. Because it's the truth. And they say, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Let me continue. Neither in decent. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Be ye, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, controlled by the spirit. I like that. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Why is these people walking around here thinking that they belong to God and they ain't got no spirit of God? Why? Why is people doing that? And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. So you notice, Christ living in you, your body is dead. And why is it dead? Because sin is, is the known ingredient of the human being. So therefore, if Christ is in you, then your body is dead. And the only reason why it's dead is to keep sin out. That's why it's dead, right? But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Okay, so let me backtrack. I got that wrong. 
The body's dead because of sin. But if Christ be in you, the body's dead because of sin. Right. So, I'm right. I got it right. So, yes. Your body is dead. That's the spiritual body. It's dead. Right? Because sin no longer reigns in you. Sin is not in control anymore. You're not living your life based on sin. You're not being controlled by the devil who is the author and confusion of sin. So now, if the spirit lives in you, then you're alive. Because you're going to do the right things now. But if the spirit... Of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwell in you. So you know every now and then your body going to quicken. You ain't going to be sitting up there dead like a lump on a log and never move. And the Holy Ghost will never come by and quicken. Got to quicken your body. And you shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. All right, I'm about to end this. I'm about to end this because I can go on and on and on and on. All right, so that's all I'm going to say about that. We'll talk some more. Have a good night.